Hey, Kyle from Driveline Baseball here to answer some common questions that we've had on the website. You can always email me your questions, kyle at drivelinebaseball.com, through the contact link on our website, or you can always send us direct messages or uh, tweets at Driveline Bases on Twitter. I'm getting better at using Twitter. Uh, the whole social media thing has kind of passed me, but I'm giving it a shot. Um, you know, we've got a couple questions. I want to get to those right away. Uh, to give you an idea, this is our weighted baseball you know, velocity kit that we use. We have stuff as heavy as these duct tape covered six pound balls, uh, two pound baseballs. And then in the book, the free book that you can get on the website, you know, they go down to close three ounces, uh, you know, up to seven and 11 or so. And these are, you know, champion sports, frozen ropes. You know, all the information is in that free book you can get on the website. The link is in the description. Uh, be sure to check that out if you haven't gotten it. We've had thousands of requests for the book. Uh, we're really excited to get that out. Um, so definitely check it out if you haven't yet. Um, you know, this, I hope to do some more question and answer videos down the line. So I want to get to kind of some of the questions we had on Twitter today, uh, as well as some email questions. The first one is, how do you throw the weighted baseballs after you've done your long toss? Everybody knows, you know, in the book it's outlined, you do your 24 to 36 uh, max rep long toss throws, you know, for distance. And you bring it in, you compress the throws uh, to get, you know, the on a line throws. Uh, that's really important. Uh, but then how do you throw the weighted baseballs? Do you throw it on a windup, out of a stretch? You know, how do you do it? That's a good question. You know, we, we sort of outlined it in the book, but it's not as clear as it should be. Um, so I want to, you know, clarify with this video. You know, we do step behinds here uh, for the weighted baseballs for the vast majority of it. The idea is that they should be throwing the baseball into a canvas net, um, you know, or a backstop about 20 to 30 feet. The idea is you don't want them throwing it from 60 feet or 90 feet. Uh, the idea is that you're just throwing the heck out of it. You know, if you could back it off to 60 feet or anywhere close to where a pitcher would be, they start thinking, I want to throw a strike, I want to locate it. You're not trying to locate a 7-ounce baseball. You're not trying to locate a 3-ounce baseball. Uh, you're certainly, as heck, not trying to locate a 6-pound baseball. You know, uh, it's all about throwing it and you know, developing better muscle proprioception as well as fitness. Um, it's a, not a pitching program, it's a throwing program. Big difference. Uh, so we use a step behind, you know, you do a one step behind like a crow hop, then unleash it real fast, you know, tighten the glute medius, uh, turn from the core, you know, get that good forearm lay back, and that's the idea behind it. And we'll have some videos on the website demonstrating that in the near future. Uh, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, you know, you can get these weighted baseballs from Amazon, ships free, got that link in our books, definitely check it out, we'll put the link in the description as well. Okay. That should do it for the weighted baseballs for now. So let's get to Twitter right here uh, and uh, pull up some of the questions. Okay, so we got uh, you know William Krasny, uh, who was you know with pitching with the Indians and the Mahoning Valley Scrappers. Uh, you know, longtime Indians fan, so it's great to hear from an Indian you know Indians player. Uh, he talks a little bit about the you know tell me about the discussion of the potential benefits of wrist weights and how to implement them in a strength and conditioning program. That's an outstanding question. You know, as most people know, wrist weights um, were developed for, by a physical therapist for jumping, for rehabilitation exercises, uh, and they were really popularized in baseball by Dr. Mike Marshall, um, who uses them uh, in his training program. Uh, the idea is that you use the wrist weights to train the pronator teres as well as the posterior shoulder to help build the brakes of the arm. Um, you know, the, the bigger the brakes of the arm, the better it can accelerate. Uh, and that's the theory behind it. And, you know, we use it in here uh, quite a bit, and we love that theory. Uh, we train, you know, it's called training eccentrically. When I spoke to Dr. Murray Maitland, uh, Director of Rehabilitative Medicine at the University of Washington, he worked with Dr. Marshall's pitchers a long time ago, you know, to biomechanically analyze them. And what he said was that, you know, he loved how Dr. Marshall trained the pitchers eccentrically. And not a lot of guys do that. They're really focused on stuff like weighted baseballs, you know, train concentrically, which means to throw the ball as hard as possible to really work on the engine and the transmission of the car. But in reality, you know, you really need to work on the brakes of the car. And uh, that's what wrist weights do. That's what heavy, you know, doing a lot of pull-ups do, uh, single arm dumbbell rows, really training the posterior shoulder. Um, and, you know, that's why you can do stuff like uh, swing a racquetball racket or swing a tennis racket and it's way safer on the shoulder than actually releasing a baseball. 
you experience that massive deceleration force when you're letting go of a five ounce object rather than, you know, close to a pound, you know, when it comes to a glove or a, uh, um, you know, a tennis racket. And uh, that's kind of the idea behind that is that, you know, not a lot of tennis players suffer serious shoulder injuries. A lot of it's, you know, bursitis or um, overuse injuries or, you know, impingement or general use cases like that where it's just rest and basic physical rehab. Um, you know, solves the problem, but they don't suffer like massive slaps, uh, you know, labrum tears, um, fraying or rotator cuff problems. It's pretty rare compared to baseball where it's, you know, almost, you know, very common. Um, and that's kind of the theory behind, you know, the NPA is behind that when they trained Steve Delabar. That's the thing they did a lot of, you know, modified towel drill stuff where you're holding an object and not letting it go. Uh, you know, we do a lot of that. You know, we've pioneered that here for a long time. Um, you know, we came up with it on our own, but of course, plenty of guys like Ron Wolforth have thought of it uh, using rebounders. Has been in physical therapy for you know decades, uh, dating back to the Houston Astros physical therapists in the 70s when they realized that stretching people into internal rotation helps. You know, that's a deceleration exercise. So, you know, William, that's a great question, and I hope that helps answer you know what the theory behind that is. And we'll have some videos you know detailing specifically what we're doing. You know, on the website soon. Uh, you know, Nathan Adderhold uh, says, uh, "What's you know what Ryan Madsen, Hakeem Soria, those guys could could do to avoid UCL injuries?" That's a heck of a question. I mean, it's not easy. You know, if it was easy enough to you know reduce elbow injuries or eliminate them entirely, we would have done it by now. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success here. Nobody here has suffered an elbow injury. Um, and we've had a lot of guys with pre-existing elbow injuries who have never retorn their UCL or flexor tendon or suffered, uh, you know, fractures of the humerus or anything like that, which is pretty common in baseball. Um, we attribute a lot of that to our biomechanics lab and our high-speed cameras. That's that's a big portion of it. But additionally, you know, fitness is really overlooked. You, you talk about the, the, the massive proximal forces and all the forces on the, the UCL and the forearm and the shoulder when it comes to, you know, internally rotating the humerus at over 7,000 degrees per second, you're talking about massive, you know, a massive deceleration force and a massive compression force on the elbow. Um, and so that's really tough to tell, you know, you, a biomechanics lab can tell you approximately the force, how many newtons or, you know, what the torque is on the elbow, but it can't tell you the tension on the UCL. You know, those two are obviously correlated, but uh, you can't get the exact number. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. The insertions aren't the same for everybody. Um, you know, muscles in the medial forearm fire and help protect the UCL in certain types of pitchers, depending on how they pronate their forearm, when they do, the type of pitch they throw. Um, you know, valgus, the valgus stress angle is really important. If they're a side armor, if they're overhand, you know, elbow flexion, extension, all these things are play into that. So it's really difficult to, to tell all that. And no formula gives you the answer. You know, the weight of the humerus, the weight of the muscles of the forearm are really important. Um, so it's a very big multivariate question. You know, we attack it from the most obvious case is fitness. You know, the, if the, the muscles of the medial forearm, the breaking force of the forearm are strong, it's gonna really help protect the UCL. There's a lot of research that shows that that's true, you know, that you know, the aponeurosis and other muscle, you know, and the muscles of the pronator flexor mass help absorb a lot of the load on the elbow. Uh, you can definitely check that out if you're interested in our research study page on drivelinebaseball.com. Um, you know, you can take my word for it, um, but definitely check it out if it's interesting to you. It's a great question. Uh, you know, and then there's also our article on Michael Pineda um, about his, you know, shoulder. He has an anterior slap. Uh, and it's good that it's not a posterior tear where, you know, you might have shoulder, you know, capsular tightening, which is a real problem, you know, for pitchers. It's the Mark Pryor type surgery. Um, you know, the Pineda thing is interesting. You know, they forced a change up on them, like our article on the website said the other day. And, uh, you know, that can really change someone's mechanics. You know, their fastball velocity can go way down because they try pushing a change up. They're trying to get their body action way too linear rather than rotational. And that, you know, can cause a decrease in fastball velocity, but also it can cause forces to be distributed on the shoulder and the elbow in ways that, you know, they never had experienced before. You're talking about a massive mechanical change for a guy that throws in the upper 90s to be all the way down to 90 is usually not just a fitness problem because he had an MRI before he went to New York and there was nothing anomalous. And again, MRIs are not 
you know, perfect. You know, every pitcher's shoulder is really screwed up uh, that throws over 90 miles an hour because it's an asymmetrical sport. And to throw 90, the shoulder has to be massively deformed. You know, and that's a lot of people don't get that. Pitchers don't have normal shoulders. You can't. You can't have a normal shoulder and throw 90 miles an hour. The average Joe on the street, if he wished to throw 90, and all of a sudden say he could based on mechanics or fitness or whatever, would immediately, you know, rupture connective tissue in his shoulder and his elbow um, because they're not, you know, strong enough to withstand the forces. And you know, to be honest, there's just not going to be the clearance in the glenohumeral joint to do it. Um, and it's really interesting that people don't think of it that way. But uh, the elbows and shoulders of pitchers are deformed um, and that helps them. It's kind of weird, uh, but that's kind of how it is. Um, so those are some of the questions that we've had and I think that are really good. Um, and again, I want to reiterate, you can get the weighted baseball program totally free on our website. You send an email to weightedbaseball at drivelinebaseball.com. You can put whatever in the body, whatever in the subject. You'll get a response. Uh, it'll show you where to get the book how to download it, and uh, so all free. You know, it's got links on Amazon that help pay for the cost if you buy the books. Um, you know, it kicks back a couple of bucks to us, you know, and they're just affiliate links, no big deal. Uh, and then you'll get a reminder when our fastball training book comes out, which I'm really excited about, and I'll make another video for, uh, talk a little bit about that later. So, you know, if you have any questions, again, Kyle at drivelinebaseball.com, or better yet, shoot me a tweet at drivelinebases, um, definitely check it out. Uh, I'm trying to get better with the social media, so definitely send it to me and uh, I'll definitely put it on my Twitter site and hopefully I'll do these videos once a week or once every two weeks. Thanks a lot, guys.